in this lecture we will discuss on resolution of vector and components first of all what is resolution the process of resolving a vector into two or more vector is called resolution of a vector or vector resolution like if r is the original vector if r is the original vector and we resolving this vector into two or more vectors this like this is this is one vector p this is one vector q this is one vector r this is one vector s then we made this r vector into several vectors like p q r and s as we can divide this or we can resolve this vector into several vectors then this whole process is known as resolution of a vector and each resolving vector each resolving vector is called a component of the original vector so this p this q this like then that not be r that will be i said this is t this t this s will be the component of the original vector r so this is known as component vector component of r vector this is the most important lessons of vector series so we should understand what is resolution of vector and component to understand better our vector series in further now resolution in any two components now we will find out the value of the components how we can calculate the value of components so this is our original vector r this is our original vector r and this is our vector p and this is our vector q this is our vector q r is the original vector and p q are the component vector of r now q make an angle of beta with r and p make an angle of alpha with r as this o a b c is a parallelogram so we can say that this angle also be beta and this angle should be 180 degree minus alpha plus beta we know that the sum of the three angle of a uh, uh, three angle of a triangle is 180 degree so as we know this is uh, the uh, angle o equals to alpha and angle b equals to beta in a triangle of o b c then angle a will be 180 degree minus alpha plus beta so angle a is come from in that manner now give me some time to remove this thing now we have to find out what is the value of this p vector and what is the value of this q vector like the component vector p and q to determine the value of p and q we will perform the sine triangle law we'll perform sine triangle law on the triangle of o b c if we perform triangle law in uh, of the triangle o b c then we will get o a divided by sine beta a b divided by sine alpha equals to o b divided by sine of 180 degree minus alpha plus beta so to perform sine triangle law if we take this value like this this OA then we will take the opposite of this OA the opposite angle of this OA is beta so we will perform OA divided by sine beta if we take AB if we take AB the opposite of AB is angle alpha so we will perf we will write this ab divided by sine of alpha and the for the last one the ob the opposite of ob is 180 degree minus alpha plus beta 
So we will write sin OB divided by sin 180 degree minus alpha plus beta. Now we can write this that we know OA equals to uh, vector P. So we can write vector P divided by sin beta equals to we know AB as it is Q and it is a parallelogram. So it will be also Q. So we can write Q divided by sin alpha equals to we know OB is the original vector R. So R divided by sin. We know sin 180 degree minus alpha plus beta it will land on the second quadrant and in the second quadrant the sign is positive the, in the second quadrant sign is positive so we can write this thing as one sign of alpha plus beta so if if i want to find out the value of p we can write vector p equals to r into sine beta divided by sine of alpha plus beta and if i if i want to find what is q then q will be q will be r into sin alpha divided by sin of alpha plus beta r into sin alpha divided by sin alpha plus beta the technique to remember what is the component or what is the value of the component p and the component q is it is actually very easy we will write r the original vector into if i want to uh, find out what is the what is the value of p or the, comp uh, the value of the component p then this is the p vector and here p make an angle of alpha so we don't we will not uh, take sin alpha instead of sin alpha we will take sin beta for p component and in in in, in the uh, in the denominator it will be sin of alpha plus beta and for the q vector for the q vector we know it is, it is known that we will first of all we will write the original vector r into here q make an angle of beta with r so we will take we will take alpha so r into sin alpha divided by sin of alpha plus beta this is the technique to remember how we can find components of the original vector now resolution into perpendicular components so here in our previous the in our previous the components are not in perpendicular mode but here angle a o c equals to 90 degree so they are perpendicular o a is perpendicular to o c o a is perpendicular to o c so for this kind of cases uh, the, actually that is very simple if i take this is the vector p and this is the vector q and this is the vector r here we know that in our in the in, in the denominator we will write sine of alpha plus beta here here if i take this as a beta and it is if i take this as alpha then whole alpha plus beta equals to 90 degree it will be 90 degree and we know sine 90 degree equals to 1 so so the easiest part is p equal to p equal to r we will write r and sine we know we will perform the opposite angle so as it is p then we, we will do we will, uh, uh, we take opposite angle beta so we write this as sine beta and for q we write this as r sine alpha instead of beta i want to represent it as alpha so i can write this as uh, give me some time i can write this as r sin 90 degree minus beta r sin 90 degree uh, not beta that will be alpha r sin 90 degree minus alpha so we can write this as r cos alpha r cos alpha so from that we can write if both components are perpendicular to each other then we can write this p equals to r cos of alpha and q will be equals to r sin of alpha and this is the most important component rule or formula which will be needed in our further lecture so we have to remember this formula we have to remember this is the most important lecture now coming 
to an example practical example so that we can understand uh, we can understand easily why the, why we need this resolution of vector and components so there is a question is it easy to push a lawn roller or pull so here it is a lawn roller instead of lawn roller we also can uh, we also can uh, we also can replace this as luggage luggage in our luggage in the airport or in the railway station or in the bus station we often push we often pull our luggage we push our luggage so why we pull our luggage for this we uh, we will uh, understand uh, why it is easy to pull or push uh, uh, with the help of vector component so first of all this is a lawn roller this is a lawn roller oh, give me some time this is a lawn roller our first case is push our first case is push the lawn roller so if i push the lawn roller if i push the lawn roller then i push i push this lawn, uh, lawn roller as i push this lawn roller so i will uh, give a, uh, i will give an f force i will give an i will give a f force on this uh, The applied force of this lawn roller is F. I put an F force in the handle of this lawn roller. And the weight of this lawn roller is W, is W acting downwards. So when I push this lawn roller, uh, I I, when I push this uh, lawn roller, I will apply F force on the handle of this lawn roller. And the, there will be two components. One is the component along with x axis and the other will be the uh, component along with y axis. So this is our x axis, this is our y axis. And in the x axis, in the x axis, if uh, if the lawn roller, if the lawn roller create an angle of theta with x axis, with x axis, then the resultant uh, uh, so so the component along with x axis will be f cos theta and the component along with y axis will be f sin theta as the uh, the component of y axis and the w acting at the same point downwards then the then the resultant weight w prime will be w plus f of y that means the weight of the lawn roller will be increase so in case of pushing we will add an extra extra fy forces along with the weight of the lawn roller that's why it is very hard to push a lawn roller now coming to the second case coming to the second case give me some time to remove this thing second case is the second case is pull a lawn roller so this is our lawn roller and this is the handle of the lawn lawn roller so if i pull a lawn roller i will add a force on the handle in that manner so the weight of this force working w the downwards and the components of this f force is f of x and f of y so f of x create an the angle of theta so f of x will be f cos theta and f of y will be f sin theta here i can see that the w and f of y are acting opposite to each other at 180 degree so the resultant w prime will be w minus f of y as w is greater than f of y so here we can find that our weight of the lawn roller will be decreased for some uh, uh, in in that case here we can find find out that when i push the lawn roller i increase the weight but when i pull the uh, lawn roller i decrease the weight so that's why it is easy to 
pull a uh, lawn roller instead of pushing a lawn roller. So this is a practical example where vector component or a, the, here fx and fy are component. fx acting uh, fx acting on x-axis and fy acting on y-axis. These two components for these two kind of component, pushing is harder than pulling. So uh, we we understand what is the uh, why, why we need components vector components in our daily life that's all for today's video hope you understand what is vector resolution and components in our next lecture we will discuss more about vectors briefly